these patients who are somewhere on the insulin resistance spectrum, somewhere towards diabetes or, or beyond, and I realized that all these people have energy toxicity. They've literally ingested too much energy in their body. Eating too much energy is something that creates all of these problems, right? And what I realized is all of these people are over consuming energy because we've somehow disconnected energy from satiety, mm. right? So big picture, all of your insulin resistance, all of your energy toxicity, all of your obesity, you've disconnected energy from satiety. So you've eaten past satiety and eaten too much energy. And we've left behind the protein and the minerals, the nutrients, and of course, high energy density carbs and fats together is actually kind of addictive and drives overfeeding like crazy f because it's so rewarding. And then what we see is people are radically overeating past satiety because they actually get negative satiety from these high energy density carbs and fats together. So I realized that satiety comes from protein and minerals and the non-energy portion of your food. And then... In order to fix the problem, you have to rebalance satiety with energy. You know what I mean? The best way to do that is to target protein and go out of your way to eat foods with the highest protein percentage possible. And then you're going to get your protein and mineral and nutrient satiety at a lower energy intake. You know, if you disregard everything we said today and you've been to like Weight Watchers or a, a traditional dietitian, they said, hey, look, here's your energy expenditure, your resting metabolic rate. You just need to be in a deficit of 300 calories per day. It seems that that's, and correct me if I'm wrong, again, my thinking that that's just a, a losing battle because once you lose body fat or lose body weight, your resting metabolic rate goes down. So then to be in a deficit, you have to decrease your calories even more. So it seems like a dog chasing its tail to the point of no return. And like you said, if you're just looking at calories, it's depressing as hell because you can only eat, you know, two calories a day. And personally, I think the way out of that is an insanely high protein percentage. This is just one more reason why I'm focused on the protein to energy ratio rather than calories. I would encourage someone with a huge amount of adaptive thermogenesis to crank their protein up maybe up to 50% of calories. You're going to be able to be weight stable or even continue to lose at a much higher caloric intake. The thermic effect of food is going to be higher. Energy expenditure is going to be higher. Uh, you want to diet down in the highest calories you can get, and the way to pull that off is to make most of them protein. So I really, really, really like the protein to energy ratio better than calories. And uh, that's really why I'm such a carnivorous fan of animal foods, because you always have a higher nitrogen to carbon ratio in animal foods. It's just basic science, just trophic level. Like the, the plant can only absorb so much nitrogen because its roots don't reach very far. The animal comes along and eats a thousand plants and just concentrates all the nitrogen. You have bioaccumulation. All the minerals get bioaccumulated. All the nitrogen gets bioaccumulated. And then you get, you know, orders of magnitude, higher levels of micronutrients and minerals and protein in an animal food than you do in a plant food. about for the general public who are middle age between maybe 20 and 50 years old or 55 mm -hmm. what is protein doing when we eat it and what does it mean when we eat enough protein so you're making sure that you're getting enough leucine per meal so it's not necessarily the protein right because you've got pea protein and soy protein but it, it is really the amino acids that are necessary so as you age you get this thing called anabolic resistance right so the protein that you ingest becomes it it doesn't quite stimulate the body the way that it should, the way that it did maybe perhaps when you were in your 20s. 
So you require more of this over a period of time. What's happening though right now is that there's this anti-animal narrative. So we're talking about having more plant-based proteins. That is the single worst piece of advice that I could ever give anyone. And I actually trained as a geriatrician. So after doing two residencies and a fellowship in geriatrics and obesity medicine, my job was to help aging individuals. And the single, I'll say it again, worst piece of advice you could ever give someone who's aging. And I have to say, we're all aging. And then as we advance in age, the other way to then stimulate it is through resistance training and protein. Right. Um, but as we age, that becomes more challenging. So having high quality protein, really, you know, even as you're young. So yes, you can get away with it in your 20s. But if you have any issues with body composition, the obesogenic model of an individual is also similar to an aging individual when it comes to tissue. Mm -hmm. The more obese it is, the, the less healthy the muscle tissue. Let's talk about the, the threshold. So what I've heard you and Don talk about is 2.6 grams of leucine per meal or in, in a meal to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Right. Do you still and, think that's a reasonable number? Right. And the We know that we need 2.6. That's right. Like in, in one meal. Yes, sir. Right. To trigger yes. sort of the switch. Mm -hmm. That means muscle turns on, muscle sort of repairs, muscle is maintained. Is that what that's what happened? That's what's happening when we get this yes. sort of leucine trigger is the signal to the muscle to say, stay where you are, maintain your strength, maintain your vitality, maintain the lean mass in the body. One of the things that we cannot argue that is hard and fast is the quality of protein. The amino acids are the amino acids. You know, it's really easy to get essential and non-essential amino acids, right. truly, right? That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. We are talking about having enough amino acids at a particular dose to trigger a physiological response. And specifically, if we just break it down, we're thinking leucine here. You can't, right. Basically, the conclusion is that as we age, we need more protein to trigger this response. And as we age, we need more protein, which really flies in the face of this narrative that is growing yes. now that we should be limiting our animal protein. This is actually dangerous advice. So if you want to just zoom way, way out and dumb it really down, insulin resistance is from overfilled fat cells and you overfilled your fat cells because you were eating carbohydrates and fat at the same time. Glucose always controls oxidation preference in your cells. So if glucose is present from the outside, you will oxidize less fat. 
So exogenous glucose, glucose coming in from the outside, shuts off fat oxidation. If you're eating fat at the same time, it all gets stored. So you just eat carbs and fat together, like a donut, all day, every day. You burn glucose all the time, you store fat all the time, your adipocytes fill up, bam, you've got hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance. It's, it's really that simple. There's a really good correlation between waist circumference and insulin levels and insulin sensitivity. So um, for your average person, you could look at a waist to height ratio and know pretty much where they're at in terms of insulin sensitivity. You basically measure your waist at the belly button. You divide it by your height. You really want to be less than 0.5. If you're higher than that, you're probably in trouble. Mm -hmm. And you can draw graphs of fasting insulin level versus waist to height ratio. It's very linear. Uh, you can graph out years of life lost and waist tight ratio and it's exponential. So like the bigger you get, the faster you're just going to straight up die, right? So it's always start with diet and it's basically one meal at a time, replace your carbs with protein. So I like to start with a diet. It's one meal at a time. You usually start with breakfast and you just trade out your carbs for protein and fat. Mm -hmm. So you're eating, you know, steak and eggs instead of breakfast cereal. And, and only after you've got that nailed, I think, can you really dive into exercise. But uh, once people get a little bit of success, sometimes you see it snowball. Mm -hmm. And these people come back in a year later and you can't even recognize them. And they're just like a fitness model, you know. And, and they're so, doing all kinds of different things. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then it just grows from there. And now you're pushing yourself to do all sorts of insane stuff. So